So in this video, I'd like to talk about Flame, which is a fairly uh, sophisticated piece of malware that's been gathering a lot of attention recently. And, and Flame has also been called uh, Skywiper. It's also been called Flamer. So if you see threats by those particular names, they're all referring to the, the exact same thing. Um, there's also a threat out there called Wiper. Uh, and Wiper is uh, kind of concurrent to, to Flame, but it shouldn't be confused with Flame. It's a different piece of malware, so it's, Flame is not the same as Wiper. Uh, so just don't confuse the same. Just don't confuse the two. Okay. Now, basically, uh, Flame is a, a fairly sophisticated attack toolkit. Um, and it's basically used um, in, in a bunch of different capacities. And I'll talk about them here. But really, the, the main thing to keep in mind uh, is there's been a relation between Flame and some other attack toolkits that are out there. And, and I'll talk about that. Um, briefly, and let me, let me give you a few more characteristics of Flame. Uh, one of the first characteristics, it appears to be targeted, uh, and, and specifically it looks like it's targeting um, computers that are in the Middle East. So it's not, you know, unless you're in one of these regions, you're unlikely to ever see an instance of Flame uh, in the wild. Uh, it's also fairly sophisticated and, and many complex in terms of functionality. So it's, uh, it's not kind of your run of the mill threat. It's clearly designed by somebody who knows what they were doing. sophisticated, uh, it's complex, okay? And then the other thing which I think is interesting about Flame in particular, it, there, there doesn't appear to be any uh, monetary incentive. In other words, the attack seems to be purely about uh, gathering information rather than trying to actually profit off of that kind of activity. And when you see these types of characteristics, the, the fact that there is uh, a very specific target, the fact that it's, it's sophisticated, and the fact that there appears to be no uh, specific monetary incentive, that points to the notion that Flame, and, and I think this would be where my bet is, is that Flame is kind of a, it's, it's, it's a state-sponsored piece of malware. Now, this is a speculation at this point, but I would suspect that it's state-sponsored given the level of complexity and the, uh, the, the lack of any monetary incentive. Uh, it appears to be kind of similar in some regards to other cyber weapons like uh, uh, Dooku. Um, so Dooku is spelled uh, D-U-K-U or D-U-Q-U uh, and also Stuxnet and you've probably heard of these and Stuxnet uh, was sort of the first major uh, cyber weapon that people talked about uh, this is a couple of years ago uh, and then since then uh, a new variant of Stuxnet called Dooku was was found and actually they shouldn't say variant but because they are they are different enough uh, but it seems like a, a successor to Stuxnet was Dooku. Now, Flame appears to be kind of in a similar vein to Dooku and Stuxnet, uh, but it is um, certainly different enough. I mean, you use some of the same mechanisms, but it, it is definitely different enough that it's not clear that they were actually written by the exact same team, although uh, you know, there is some evidence that suggests that they were written in parallel, so po possibly done in parallel to Dooku and Stuxnet, uh, perhaps by a different team, uh, but maybe a team that had access to some of the same knowledge. Um, so maybe it was done as a backup effort. Uh, in other words, uh, something that might have been there in case Stuxnet or, or, or uh, Dooku got, got discovered and maybe they wanted you know, a third mechanism by which to go ahead and infect people and, and garner information. Um, the other thing that I, I do want to point out about uh, Flame is that it, it's a bit less targeted than Dooku. And so Dooku in particular is, is, was more targeted. It, it affected a very small number of machines. Uh, Flame appears to have affected maybe in the thousands of machines. It, it's, it's a bit less targeted than, uh, than Dooku was. And also, uh, kind of in, in a similar vein to Dooku, it's, it's, uh, it's also an information stealer. In other words, it, it's trying to steal information more than anything else. Okay, and Dooku was also designed around the same aims, and perhaps that's because they want to steal information for perhaps a future attack. So it, it's kind of the, the, the potential rationale behind why somebody would have invented a threat like Flame. Now, to me, the most interesting part of Flame is that it appears to be state-sponsored, uh, but from the perspective of actual malicious intent, you know, it's not necessarily all that different from the malware instances that affect literally tens of millions of endpoints each day. And, and, you know, given how targeted the threat is, it's unlikely that a typical user will ever be infected by Flame directly. But having said that, uh, with threats like this, with threats of this nature, in many ways a genie is kind of out of the bottle now, so to speak. And so 
we'll almost certainly see variants of flame and perhaps uh, you'll see other threats that build upon flame and those other threats may pose a more immediate concern uh, for you or for a typical end user system but the flame threat itself was, was so targeted I think it's it's unlikely that a typical user is ever going to see a real instance of flame but um, it's much more likely that you'll see a variation of flame on your systems. Now, when describing malware, I, also, I find it's often helpful to think about uh, malware kind of along three different dimensions. And the first dimension is really what actions the malware takes. Like, what did it actually do on the system that was malicious? Uh, the second is how the malware spreads. And the third is how the malware works underneath, what the underlying architecture is, what are the characteristics that allow that malware to stay resilient. Now, it's definitely going to take me a few videos to maybe two or three videos to describe all these characteristics. But what I thought I'd do is maybe in this video, I'll kind of end by talking specifically about uh, what malicious actions Flame takes. Okay, so specifically Flame is an information stealer. It, it does a number of things. And I think what makes it somewhat unique is that it does kind of all of these things versus any single one of them. Uh, it records audio and it really will record anything on your internal microphone. Uh, and I think it, it seems to be triggered on uh, kind of interesting applications like if you're, uh, let's say, running Skype or if you're having a, a chat session of some sort. Okay, it also takes screenshots. And again, here it focuses on interesting applications, for example, uh, instant messaging applications. Uh, it sniffs network traffic. It's looking for things like passwords and other credentials. It logs keystrokes kind of in a similar fashion to uh, any other keystroke logger you might see out there. Uh, it performs Bluetooth reconnaissance. In other words, what it does is it goes out there and it tries to find uh, other devices that are discoverable via Bluetooth. It also announces itself to those devices as well, so it kind of acts as a beacon. Uh, and the idea is to kind of form a map of, of what's going on in the local region in terms of uh, Bluetooth devices. Now, overall, uh, Flame operates like a botnet. Uh, it basically has all the different nodes that are infected by flame, the, the few thousand or so nodes that are infected by flame, uh, all reach out to a CNC server. Okay, and we believe there are about uh, uh, 50 or so uh, domains that are associated with flame. Uh, and these are associated with about uh, 15 or so IP addresses. Okay, and you know, really at this point, um, you know, there's a lot I think in terms of of what Flame does. It's unknown. It's a very big piece of malware, so I think it'll be a while before we fully uh, digest everything it does. But that's kind of the high level characteristic of it. Um, and really, all this information that I talked about here is sent to one of these CNC servers. It's basically sent to the CNC server, um, uh, and it's transmitted over SSL or SSH, so in other words, it's encrypted. So just think of it as transmitted over an encrypted channel. And uh, also before sending it over, uh, it's also compressed. So it's compressed and transmitted. And there are multiple compression schemes that uh, Flame seems to use. Okay, and basically this is transmitted periodically. Uh, and I think it's kind of done to stay relatively under the radar, so to speak. Okay, now it's not clear to me what the attacker's actual motives are. I mean, nothing uh, on, on this list, if you look at this list of things that, that this info stealer does, uh, nothing on this list immediately suggests monetary incentives. And so perhaps the attackers were, were gathering information, maybe it's, it's an accelerator Dooku, where maybe they're, they're trying to gather information to a slightly larger scale, and perhaps that information will be used uh, as reconnaissance for you know, future efforts within cyber warfare. But it's really anybody's guess at this point what the actual attacker's incentives were. We'll, we'll I guess, never really know for sure. So what I'll do is I'm going to end this video uh, right here, and I will do some follow-on videos where I'll talk about Flame in some more detail, and I'll discuss specifically how it spreads as well as what its underlying characteristics are. Thanks a lot, and I hope you join me in the future videos.